the note that was found on the gunman's body, claiming that he himself had some sort of traumatic brain injury, possibly from high school football. Investigators discovered that note on Tamura's body, in which he blamed the NFL for inflicting CTE on him, and then he demanded in the note that his brain be studied. Joining us now to talk more about exactly what CTE is, is Dr. Ben Carson, world-renowned neurosurgeon and founder of the American Cornerstone Institute. Doc, it's nice to have you back on uh, unfortunate circumstances to discuss, but you are considered one of the most, you know, renowned experts when it comes to the brain. And we've heard about traumatic brain injury with our military active duty and veterans. And we've heard about the concussions and the CTE that professional football players have been dealing with for years. So break down for my viewers, first and foremost, what CTE actually is. Well, first of all, our hearts go out to those families that were affected by this uh, in individual. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Basically, it means that the brain has been traumatized on a chronic basis. So the brain obviously is not made to take those kinds of impacts. And things happen to the tissue as well as to the small vessels in the brain over the course of time. It can recover if it's just one or two, but if it's multiple over a long period of time, uh, you have a synergistic effect of damage. And that's very problematic. The unfortunate thing is it can't really be diagnosed except by autopsy. There are many neuroscientists who are working on ways to try to predict before death. Uh, at Mayo Clinic, they're doing some, some wonderful work on that right now. And I think we will eventually have a way of being able to diagnose it, maybe with some very fancy uh, MRIs and uh, nuclear medicine type studies. But right now, we're kind of stuck. Leading up to you, uh, Doc, I, I did mention that, that you can only find out if somebody's suffering from this by autopsy. But I also mentioned in your intro some of the warning signs, the people that say, I'm suffering from this, this, and this. You're the expert. I, I'm not. Uh, neither is my team. We're just news guys. So can you break down what are some of the symptoms and warning signs? Because I'm sure there's a lot of Americans out there that want to know, hey, you know, my husband played football in college or my son was in the military and his Humvee got hit by IED and he's having A, B, C, D and E. What are those things we need to look out for? Well, you know, it, there isn't one uh, classical presentation. It's sort of like dementia. Dementia exhibits a lot of different presentations. So they can have some memory problems, uh, but frequently they will have emotional issues. Uh, someone who used to be nice and peaceful uh, becomes quickly irritable. Uh, someone who used to be very irritable <laughs> becomes very calm. Mm. Uh, you know, changes in mood and changes in attitude. Some people have headaches with it. Uh, but the ad to attitudinal issues are probably the ones that are, that are easiest. Basically, if someone's had a lot of trauma to their head and you notice something different about them that is controlled by the brain, uh, it's time to start thinking about uh, this diagnosis and looking to see if anything can be done to help them. And Dr. Carson, it's not just, I don't want to just like pigeonhole and say, hey, this is only affecting football players and veterans. You could have CTE or traumatic brain injury from any type of head injury. So people out there, let's say, and again, you tell me, that had a bad car crash, that had a bad fall, right? Uh, it's not as likely to occur with a single incident. Okay, so multiple. It's, it's the repeated incidents that tend to cause the problem because the brain has remarkable ability to heal itself. But if you keep hitting it, it loses some of that ability. Yeah, that makes sense. I want to go back to the NFL for a second because I know that you, a lot of docs have been outspoken and there was the big controversy, uh, the big alleged cover-up that the NFL knew about this for decades. They didn't say jack squat because they didn't want to have to pay out big medical bills and stop people from joining the league or God forbid people stop watching and buying merch. Um, 
But I just wanted to get your take on that whole thing, on how the NFL handled the situation about traumatic brain injury those years back because it appears this gunman, this was his sole purpose, even though we can't find any record of him ever playing in the NFL, and the only video clips are him commenting about his high school football career when he was playing for, I believe it was Granada Hills, out near, I think that's the L.A. area in California. Again, that was in his youth, but now he's been living in Vegas for several years, and local police even had two different instances where they did a mental hold on him in 22 and 24. So he was dealing with something, and so I just want to get your take on that whole NFL and traumatic brain injury, how it was covered up, then exposed. Yeah, well, it clearly is not something that's isolated to the NFL. Right. It can occur in uh, high school and college. In fact, probably most of the cases are not in the NFL.